Number four out of five in my series of speaker reviews, and this is one that I have been asked to look at many, many times, or at least the older revision. The Audio Engine A2 Pluses are the follow-up to the older revision, the extremely popular Audio Engine A2s, and I have to say, I was really excited to take them for a test drive. The Corsair Flash Voyager Go is the easy way to move photos, music, and videos between your Android device and your PC. Click now to learn more. So let's start with what they are. The A2 Plus is a powered 2.0 speaker setup that relies on quality MDF construction, with each speaker equipped with a 3 quarter inch silk dome tweeter and 2.75 inch custom Kevlar woofer. The left speaker contains the business end of things, with power in, an analog input, as well as a USB input enabled by the now included DAC, that's an improvement over the previous A2, a coaxial audio output that allows music to be sent wirelessly to other speakers with an optional adapter or a subwoofer to be added to the system, a two-wire output to the right speaker, and finally, and I really can't figure out why they put this here, a rear-mounted volume knob. At the front, you find the speakers I mentioned before, as well as a base port that is the only real trick up the A2 Plus's sleeve in terms of reproducing low-frequency sounds, since it doesn't resort to using any digital signal processing or fake bass boost circuits, something that I'll comment on more later. But let's move on to who these are for. Well, at 250 bucks, they're solidly constructed, but not cheap, so they seem to be targeted at folks who are willing to pay a premium for well-built, no-nonsense products that deliver a tangible performance improvement over cheaper solutions, but who also don't want to get sucked into the hype train of snake oil nonsense that exists around many audiophile-grade products. Sounds like a recipe for success. Reddit, forums, and other online communities will often rally around just such a bang-for-the-buck product, and from my casual observation, that does seem to be where a lot of audio engines fame comes from. On the subject of bang for the buck, they get reasonably loud. Louder than the Bowers and Wilkins MM1s for sure, but at half the price of most of the other products in this review series, I'm not expecting them to blow the roof off of my house, and they don't. In fact, I'd say in terms of maximum volume, they're not. Crank it so loud it hurts speakers, where you're really gonna feel the explosions in your favorite action games and movies, but they would be suitable for ambient music at a cocktail party if you were to try and use them as room speakers, as long as you can convince your guests to party reasonably quietly. Another thing that they're not is studio monitors, although Audio Engine site does make a point of mentioning their studio monitor-like design philosophy, durability and, you know, quality and all that stuff. So don't be surprised if you end up with something that might not be a studio monitor but might be tuned a little bit differently than your typical, you know, Beats by Dre type of sound signature. Now, speaking of non-flat sound signatures, the bottom line for me, doing my listening tests with my usual mix of Top 40 Music, Captain America, and Titanfall Game Streams, is that the A2 Pluses did not meet my expectations, and I actually found them to be fairly anemic sounding. Yes, I come in expecting them to have a more flat reference sound signature, but I was still a little bit surprised, taken aback at how unexciting they were to listen to. Given that they're half of the price of 2.0 competitors like the Simple Audio Listen and Bowers and Wilkins MM1s, they start to look more compelling because they're certainly better than a, you know, $29.99 plastic speaker set from a gaming brand, but however natural sounding the bass might be versus the weird one-dimensional sounding bass that I described in my MM1 review, and as objectively better a solution it is to not use software tricks to play around with the way the speakers sound, I just didn't find the A2 Pluses that enjoyable to listen to. They get surprisingly loud for their size, yes, but it just feels empty compared to the systems with bass boosting tricks or subwoofers, and however much the purists might hate me for saying it, I prefer those solutions in a side-by-side -side listening test. It's not all bad news though. Expandability for the future is something to consider. B&W's MM1s do not offer any subwoofer connection, so you're stuck with them the way they are. And many prepackaged speaker sets, like Corsair's SP2500s, use proprietary cables and connectors, so while they do come with a sub, they aren't easily disconnected from it and connected to other gear in a modular fashion. Not so with these puppies. 
Hooking up a sub does wonders for the A2 Plus, and the Audio Engine S8 subwoofer is a great match for them. It helps provide the rumble that multimedia freaks will want, and while you'll be spending about $100 more than the listens of the MM1s, Aside from the MM1's clear superiority at the high end, this combo will actually give you a very well-rounded overall experience. But they still don't get my recommendation, because even with the subwoofer, they feel like an I compromised to save space or to save money solution. The enclosures, however well engineered their reinforced MDF construction with round corners might be, simply don't seem big enough to deliver the same kick in the mids or the lows that their bigger and not that much more expensive in the grand scheme of things brothers in the A5 Plus do. So that's what you're left with if you want to shop all audio engine. Not an unusual thing given their reputation. 250 bucks with no subwoofer and not a lot of fun to listen to in this reviewer's opinion. $600 with an S8 subwoofer. Or there's a third option in between that I really think takes the cake. But you'll have to wait for my full review of the Audio Engine A5 Plus to get the complete picture. Don't worry, I'll try to get it done soon. In the meantime, guys, Thank you for watching my review of the A2 Pluses. The link for where to buy this product is in the video description below the like, dislike, and share buttons, which you should definitely use accordingly. Also in the video description is a support link that we'd love for you to use if we appreciate what we do. You can get a t-shirt, give us a monthly contribution, or change your browser bookmark to sites that give us an affiliate kickback when you buy stuff. It helps us out a lot. Thank you again for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.